everyone, Kyle here from Redis Labs. Today we're going to go over the scaling options in Redis Enterprise. If this is your first introduction to Redis Enterprise, you might want to go and review our getting started videos or documentation. We're going to deep dive today by looking at three primary ways of scaling Redis Enterprise, by shard and node, by proxy, and with the cluster API. As a quick reminder, Redis Enterprise is made up of a few primary components. Let's look at it from largest to smallest. A cluster, which is made up of nodes. Each node is made up of a proxy, a distributed cluster manager, and one or more shards. And of course, your application that is connected to the cluster. By using these components in different ways, we can achieve different scaling characteristics. Let's start by adding shards to a node. Let's say we start with two shards. Let's send four commands out at the same time. Each underlying shard is a single threaded process. So two shards can process two commands simultaneously. Now, if we add two more shards to our node, we'll be able to process all four commands simultaneously. What's cool about this method is that you don't need to increase your underlying infrastructure. The proxy understands the topology of the cluster, so it farms out work to the appropriate shard based on the key. You don't have to worry about this change in shard layout. Adding a node to the cluster works in much the same way as adding a shard. As you approach the limits of your underlying infrastructure, you can join another node to the cluster. We then rebalance the shards across all the nodes. The proxy server treats each shard the same way. It doesn't matter if they're on different nodes. Traffic is doled out across all the nodes in the cluster. By default, Redis Enterprise employs a dense sharding pattern. We try to localize as much data on a single node as possible, and this works well. However, there are situations where a single node cannot host your entire data set due to RAM or code availability, or the network becoming a bottleneck. To scale out the proxy, we can use a proxy process on each node and use sparse sharding, spreading the keys out to shards on all the nodes. At connection time, you connect to an FQDN. This FQDN's DNS resolves evenly to different proxy servers on the cluster, thus evenly distributing all the traffic and connections. Each proxy server then connects as normal to the Redis shards. In our previous scenario, we were using the FQDN to spread out the load. However, this does not take into account the position of a particular key on a node. With the cluster API, the client library has knowledge of both the cluster topology and how the keys are distributed across the cluster. We start out with a sparse sharding pattern and a proxy server on each node. When you request a key, the client knows which node has this key and which proxy server to connect to. As the cluster grows, the client can be notified with a moved response to get a new layout of the cluster. The Redis Enterprise cluster abstracts the underlying resources from the type of database you need. You can create a single shard database, a highly available database, a cluster database, or a highly available cluster database all in the same cluster without needing to scale out your cluster on each provision. You can scale Redis Enterprise once you reach thresholds of CPU, memory, network, or IOPS. Redis Enterprise has a number of different methods to scale, each providing different characteristics. With Redis Enterprise, you can create a true scaling architecture that linearly increases your throughput with each shard and node added to the cluster. If you have questions about scaling Redis Enterprise, please contact expert at redislabs.com.